Thank you, Madam President, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the House. Humanity is akin to a teenager with rapidly developing physical abilities, lagging wisdom and self-control, little thought for its long-term future, and an unhealthy appetite for risk. Toby Ord, Precipice. Toby is, of course, a philosopher in Oxford, and Precipice is not the only landmark book to have originated from this place. In fact, when I helped to start the Center for the Study of the Existential Risk in that other place, <laughs> one of my explicit goals was to help that other place to catch up to Oxford when it comes to study about the existential risk. So arguing about AI being an existential risk in front of an Oxford audience is a bit like preaching Christianity in Vatican. <laughs> Not to mention that there, are, there is an increasing consensus now, sandwiched between Alan Turing in 1951, predicting that we, will, we should expect to lose control to machines, and the inventor of deep learning itself, Jeff Hinton, starting to have doubts about, its, about his life work. There are now hundreds of AI experts sounding their alarm bells. A recent poll found that 88% of AI engineers think that AI could destroy the world. And another one reported that 76 of American voters believed that AI was a threat to our existence. Just yesterday, there was news that uh, one of the leading super forecaster groups, uh, Samot Sveti, published their prediction that uh, their estimate for AI catastrophic risk is 30%, 30%. The battle for establishing that AI is an existential risk, a battle that I've spent roughly 15 years of my career on, has now all but won. So I've set myself a bit more ambitious goal today argue that the extinct extinction risk from God like AI is not just possible, but imminent now. And we urgently, urgently need to change our trajectory. I'm going to show that there are fundamental reasons why unaligned God like AI will not leave any survivors. That they're now close to such AI while having no idea how to align it and how the counter-arguments, so unfortunately, are sadly extremely weak. Of course, I will need to be brief, so my arguments will be very condensed. The reason why I expect godlike AI, and by that I mean an AI that can conceive and carry out much better plans than any subgroup of humans can. The reason why I expect godlike AI to be utterly lethal is that by definition, it can control our environment. Rather than hacking into our computer, which of course it also can do, think about hacking into algae to make it produce what it wants, then venting the atmosphere, and finally pulling out the hydrogen from the sun. It's easy to show that such takeover happens in toy models. Indeed, in 2016, I gave a, gave a presentation just about that. Nor should we forget that humans have behaved similarly to countless other species, species who were unfortunate, unlucky, to not have sapiens in their name. Now, the reason why I expect God like AI to not care about humans has to do with that dirty secret of AI industry. The frontier AIs are not built, they are grown. The P in ChatGPT stands for pre-train. Pre-training, perhaps we should call it summoning, is a process where a simple two-page program, two-page program, is soaked in terabytes of data and megawatts of electricity and left like that for months. And then after that, attempts are made to tame the emergent alien mind. Importantly, those methods of taming rely on the AI being less competent than the humans who are taming it. Now, the reason why we expect that we are close 
to God like AI? Is that the trend of AI is getting more powerful and it's now visible to everyone? It's obvious. Just look at capability differences between GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-4. GPT-2 was released in 2019. A simple extrapolation would take us to GPT-7 before this decade is over. So in summary, we are blindly growing increasingly competent minds while hoping that they are not so competent that they spin out of control and destroy our living environment. Unfortunately, that hope is not justified, which explains things increasing anxiety among the AI developers themselves. So basically, what I'm telling you is that on the current AI trajectory, you are not going to live very long. Of course, at this point, just like a patient that has received a terminal diagnosis, you're very, very much encouraged to seek for a second opinion. Unfortunately, having been part of this, this, this debate for uh, more than a decade, I already know what you're going to hear. Almost all counterarguments fall into four categories. First, labeling. These are arguments, oh, this is science fiction. This is alarmism, but also the oldie but goodie ad hominem. These are doomsayers. Don't listen to people with that non-virtuous property X. Or these are people who say X because of Y. Second, frame control. AI is like X. And X is, X is very nice, right? And this is also the answer to your question. This has now reached grotesque levels. One prominent VC claimed recently that AI is basically just math. So why should we worry? Imagine the captain of Titanic announcing, don't worry, passengers. This is just water. <laughs> Third class of arguments, human supremacy. AI can never do X. Or more moderately, we are very far from AI doing X. I guess this is a little bit response to your, your question. This category I actually endorse, uh, as reality can act as a judge here. Unfortunately, reality, reality has been very harsh judge here recently. The set of things that only humans can do is collapsing really rapidly. And third one, or sorry, fourth category is topic change. I am more worried about X than AI extinction risk, so let's talk about X instead. Or like, let's talk about the benefits of, of AI instead, as you just heard from the opposition. <laughs> Unfortunately, usually the other topic, sometimes very important. I, don't, I agree that there are other, other problems. I agree that there are a lot of benefits from AI but they're non sequitur. They don't have any bearing on AI extinction risk. So here's your bingo card for the opposition arguments today. Labeling, frame control, human supremacy, and topic change. Have fun. Or it would be fun and games if it weren't so tragic. It's like dashing the hopes of that cancer patient by pointing out that the second opinion, while comforting indeed, was simply wrong. Still, I think I can leave you with a hopeful note. There's now growing global consensus that the unregulated, blind AI scaling is reckless and dangerous. So we need to constrain it or ban it altogether, just like we banned human cloning. Regardless of which door you walk out today, once you're on the other side of that door, please take a moment to think if and how you can help. You have received a terminal diagnosis. Please don't simply ignore it. Thank you. <laughs>